Welcome back everybody. Recently I posted a survey on my social media to real tractor owners. What is your favorite tractor attachment that you have? We got a lot of feedback, a lot of results. We compiled everything and made a top 10 list. We're going to share that with you now. Now we asked this survey in the summertime and funny enough, there wasn't much snow equipment mentioned on there. So depending when you're watching this video, maybe snow equipment is a bigger deal at that point in the year. And let's have some fun. How many of the top 10 tractor attachments do you own yourself? Leave a comment down below, or you have one that didn't make the list, make a case for it as well. We are proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you're looking for a stability solution for your machine, check out Bora, link down below. Hey, and if you'd be so kind, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button down below to see more. And if you want something for your tractor, yeah, we have a few attachments. Check out GoodWorksTractors.com. We're gonna go in reverse order from number 10 all the way to number one. It was overwhelming, not even close number one. You'll wanna stick around for that. But number 10 is a tiller. Folks are looking for attachments that are life-changing, I think. And a tiller is something you cannot replicate by doing by hand. And the ability to turn unfinished ground into prepped ground for seeding, whether that's for food plots or for um, a garden, maybe you're even doing driveway prep. We did that recently as well. It makes a huge difference and something many of you can't live without. On our website, you'll find tillers by Rhino, by Tar River, and by Dirt Dog. So check it out for more information. Next up on the list, I was a little surprised about this one. Not that I don't appreciate it because I enjoy it myself, but I wouldn't have said it was my favorite. The hydraulic top link. I didn't see a hydraulic side link, like a top and a tilt kit. That wasn't mentioned at all, but just the top link, which for me is very handy for a couple of reasons. The ability to hook up to any attachment or to be able to quickly switch between different attachments that are maybe sitting at a bit of a different angle is gonna be very helpful. Additionally, when you're using those attachments on your three-point hitch, maybe ground engaging uh, things like a box blade or a land plane or maybe it's a tiller or maybe even a rotary cutter you can quickly and easily from the operator seat change that angle the only downside of having a hydraulic top link in my opinion is the fact that it does require an additional hydraulic outlet on the back of the tractor in order to operate i'm proud of you guys for choosing this one those of you that did but a ballast box or a ballast solution was next on the list now this isn't something that you actually do any work with however it is going to allow you to do more work with your front end loader or maybe if you have ballast on the front of your tractor you can use a tiller or a brush hog easier if you don't have a loader but it's going to let you do work more safely and more confidently knowing that you are properly planted on the ground now many tractor manuals i'll take the 1025r for example it's a small tractor a subcompact the manual is going to tell you to use a thousand pounds or actually a thousand and fifty pounds minimum of ballast weight when you're using the front end loader now that is a lot of weight and if you have a larger tractor that number is going to keep on climbing Typically, you need a lot of different types of ballast weight to achieve that minimum. With a ballast box, it's gonna be one of the cheaper solutions. Get some wheel weights, maybe liquid ballast inside your tires. I've done some videos all about ballast weight, but I'm glad to see it on the list. I didn't have to walk very far for this next one. It's sitting right next to our ballast box. It is gonna be the backhoe. That's what you guys chose for the next attachment on your list. Now remember, this survey was done and these results are compiled of real tractor owners, folks like you at home. We all know I wouldn't be choosing the backhoe to be on this list. Now I do think a backhoe is useful for many different applications and projects that come up. That's not why I wouldn't put it on this list. It's more of a, um, a return on your investment. For a lot of folks, they're gonna have this big old very expensive attachment besides the tractor is probably the most expensive part of their purchase that they would make they have a project or two not everybody but just a lot of folks they use it they take it off it sits there and it's going to just kind of sit out in the sun or fade away and it ends up being thousands and thousands of dollars that is just sitting there not getting used when perhaps you could just rent out a mini excavator for two or three weekends get your projects done and you don't have all that money tied up so the word bucket showed up a whole lot in the survey results and so i took the liberty of combining the stump bucket the regular bucket just buckets in general and lumped them together and it's hard to argue with folks because buckets are so so handy when you need them for moving large quantities of material for digging out stumps for maybe planting trees moving rocks all sorts of different applications it's easy to see why a standard tractor bucket is going to come with pretty much every compact tractor on the market these days and why the stump bucket like this one right here is one of the top attachments i sell at goodworks tractors 
Now I do want to give a shout out to an honorable mention. The quick hitch was listed quite a few times, didn't quite make the cut, but it was right on the cusp. So a quick hitch really isn't a tractor attachment. It's more of an accessory that's going to make hooking up to three point attachments that much easier. You simply back up to an attachment. Maybe you have to lengthen or shorten your top link, but it's going to make that connection process that much easier, which can be a major pain to deal with, especially for larger, heavier attachments. The special thing about the category one Spico quick hitch is that it does not require bushings. The Land Prides of the world, the John Deere iMatch, the Harbor Freights, all require you to put bushings on every three-point attachment you have. These are sized to be a direct fit to Category 1 pins. We sell these, we ship them all over the country, all the time. This next one kind of validates why I don't ever buy tractors without front-end loaders because so many of you responded and said a front-end loader itself is the most valuable tractor attachment. So I buy and sell used tractors along with all the new attachments that I sell. And whether it's Kubota or John Deere, you're going to see a front end loader on every single one. Out of the hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of tractors that I sold over the years, I can think of two instances where somebody did not want the front end loader on there. That's how much of almost a standard it should be. Although when you're shopping for a new tractor, it is typically going to be priced separately. So make sure that's included in your quote. But I think where folks are going with a front end loader is the fact that you can put a bucket on there. You can put a set of pallet forks, a snow pusher, a grapple, a bale spear. The list goes on and on and on with the different things you can do as long as you have a quick attach system like a skid steer quick attach or a John Deere quick attach. Next up on the list, we're talking about mowers including a couple different kinds, a brush hog, a slasher, a shredder, a cutter, a bush hog. <laughs> you hear it called a lot of things. And then also flail mowers, all right? So we're not talking about finish mowers, not your belly mower or not even a three point finish mower, but these are for cutting your fields, maintaining that long stuff before it gets too out of control. And if there ever was an item, I think that's on this list because of the time of year that the survey was done, I definitely think it would be a cutter. It is hard to think about living without one of those right now. Next up, grapples. And you know what, we're getting pretty high. What are we, number three now on the list and it's easy to see why. You know, you can just grab and pick whatever you want to with the front end loader. That's why the front end loader made the list because these are one of the handiest attachments. Now we carry all sorts of grapples here. One of the downsides of many grapples is you have to have a third function on them. So if you use any traditional hydraulic grapple, you gotta have you know, you have two functions on your tractor, right? To raise and lower your front end loader and to curl and roll the bucket. That's two functions. In order to open and close the jaws of the grapple, you gotta have a third function on there. So if you don't have those hydraulics on your tractor, there's three options that we can help with. So number one is gonna be the brush crusher. It's a completely mechanical system. There's no extra hydraulics, no extra electric that's required. You hook it up to your front end loader and away you go. The next option for subcompacts and small compact tractors is gonna be a WorkSaver electric mini grapple. It's essentially a self-contained system. It includes and comes with the harness, everything you need to get up and running. You can have it installed in about an hour and get to work. The last option, if you do wanna go with a traditional hydraulic grapple, is that we have done videos about how you can install a summit diverter kit. So you use your tractor's existing hydraulics, divert that flow, you get a thumb switch, that way you can open and close the grapple jaws. It's gonna be a DIY solution. You can save 5% using code GWT. You order at Summit Hydraulics, link down below. Okay, number two on the list is gonna be I'm summing it up, graders, box blades, land planes. It was something to level out, move material, maintain, resurface, that kind of thing with your three point hitch on your tractor. So one of the main purposes that comes to mind is gonna be resurfacing a gravel driveway. Maybe you have washouts, maybe it just hasn't been maintained in a long time. You can get yourself a land plane or a box blade and quickly and easily resurface that and smooth out the ruts. Now with a tool like a box blade, we have a couple of them here. This is a rollover box blade, which I've never used. And then we have a traditional box blade. Those are gonna be also able to resurface driveways. They're gonna be able to trap and hold more material. So if you wanna move, maybe you're really landscaping and wanna kinda of change the contour of the ground, you can scoop up or almost drag a larger quantity of material and move it from point A to point B with a box blade. And we're gonna go ahead and roll these pulverizers into that same category. A new tool for me, something I've never used, but I'm gonna have an opportunity to do so out of the property. But this is gonna be great for resurfacing and leveling, smoothing out rough areas, especially on drives. Finally, we've reached number one, the top of the mountain. So suspenseful, I know. <laughs> number one is gonna be pallet forks, which it's hard to argue. This was 
far and away the number one response and number one with good reason. The uses for pallet forks are just numerous and lifting actual pallets is probably just the tip of the iceberg and something that most of you maybe never use them for. But many of you have responded and said, those pallet forks stay on your tractor more often than a bucket does or any other attachment because you can pick up and move anything under the sun that you can think of out of your truck bed, maybe moving attachments around, maybe picking up logs out of the woods, a poor man's grapple. Anytime you don't feel like bending over and breaking your back is a good time to use pallet forks. We've done it, we've made it through the list. How many attachments on this list do you own right now? Is there something else that should be on the list? Maybe depending on the time of year, maybe it's fall. I can see a bagger being a pretty important item. Maybe it's winter time, you have your snow blower, your snow pusher, your snow plow. Whatever it is, join the conversation by leaving a comment down below. If you want to participate in the next survey that I send out, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel or like the Facebook page as well. I'm going to post those survey requests on there with a question of the week. We'd love to have you participate. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button down below. And if you want something for your tractor, all that stuff we talked about today, visit goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.